Hello everybody! Uh, today we'll be doing some basic maintenance on this Cadillac Fleetwood Broham 1966 and I'll do my best to speak English here today in case there's any international audience that is interested in this car. I don't think this model is quite that common, at least not here in Sweden, but, uh, but uh, maybe there is someone out there who owns a car like this and would like to connect. Feel free to comment below if there is anything you're interested in, maybe some cross-comparing something or, or so. Uh, for other viewers or my common audience, maybe you usually work on something like this and uh, it's just interesting to see how how things are different in uh, in an older car like this. So we'll be doing some basic maintenance here, replacing the thermostat uh, with a cooler one and uh, flushing the radiator. So uh, we'll use some uh, chemicals to help us do this and then uh, just uh, multiple flushes. Um, if you have any questions about this car, would like to cross compare because you have one on, on your own, uh, feel free to comment below and uh, ask me to I will put, try to answer when I can I've done quite a bit of work on this Car so I know some stuff not but far from everything of course um, I could possibly also put a video up if there is something you'd like to see about this car uh, but for those that uh, uh, Are Cadillac experts and can recognize this it should be obvious from the stacked headlights in the front and the body style that this is a late 60s Cadillac. So let's get going with the opening up uh, the thermostat housing and preparing for the flushing. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like if you'd like to see more videos on this car. Clean this up a bit. The surfaces here. I will spray some uh, VD4 where the bolts go. So we'll clean this up, these bolts up before putting this back. Clean up the threads on the bolts here a bit, and um, just use some Scotch Brite pad and uh, yeah, same pad here on the neck. This thermostat, it doesn't look like crap to me and it, I can move it pretty easily, so uh, maybe I shouldn't have been too worried about this. As you can see, I've had quite a bit of leak here. I replaced these uh, hoses last year in a hurry. Uh, had one hose pop here at the clamp um, and uh, had to replace it in a hurry and uh, then this year the the clamp was a bit loose, so it's been pushing out water, as you can see, rusty water on uh, on the neck and on the water pump and yeah, around down here, so a bit dirty. Uh, I'm going to put everything back right now because I will run drop some chemicals into this that will help uh, knock loose all the rust and so on, and then I will flush the coolant. Uh, out, which is just plain water at, at this point. So, just hand tightening these bolts first, then I will snug them down. Shaking that one, yeah, so it's snug. So Ja, vi har varit på biltema, köpt lite grejer, bland annat kylarensning och som sig bör så står man ju självklart på biltemas parkering och mekar lite granna. Det hör ju liksom till biltemakulturen. Så eh, här kylarensningen eh, ska ju hjälpa till att eh, lossa lite rost och sånt då. Och enligt instruktionen här så... Eh, Säger de ju att man ska hälla i det här 
köra i 10 minuter, det vill säga varmköra motorn och sen kan man tumma ut det och det går bra att blanda tillsammans med glukol och annat. Ehm, jag har rent vatten i här just nu för jag har haft lite läckage och sånt. Ehm, så att det är ingen glukolblandning. Jag har dessutom plockat ur termostaten. Så det kommer gå runt här direkt. Och jag kommer nog kanske köra lite längre än 10 minuter. Så att det här får verka runt ordentligt. Men eh, nu har vi helt i detta i alla fall. Vi kör lite grann med detta. So, as I was saying here before, um, I put, bought some chemicals that was supposed to help uh, uh, get all rust loose and uh, help clear up the radiator here. So uh, now I've uh, the manual said to run it, uh, you can put it in with the water or, or antifreeze uh, and run the engine for 10 minutes. I have uh, plain water in my system because of a previous leak, so I just put it in. I've been running it for approximately uh, 20 to minute, 20 30 minutes, and uh, now I've drained the system here. Um, so I pulled the lower radiator hose and managed not burn my hand off. I caught most of the fluid in my drain pan here but uh, a bit uh, escaped but uh, let's pull this out and see how it looks so the water is quite brown I will probably try to flush my radiator with the plain water this is how it looks right now I will wait for the car to cool down a bit more before uh, uh, putting in cold water into it. So I've reconnected the lower radiator hose and I've filled up about six liters or um, one and a half, 1.6 uh, gallons uh, of, of water here again. I will uh, run this water through the system again because I realized I probably forgot uh, some semi crucial. Uh, stuff here that should have been rinsed here so uh, uh, people might have noticed here that I've installed uh, this uh, uh, valve here this is because my vacuum controlled uh, heater is not working and uh, as a temporary solution I've installed this uh, valve which I can manually open and close and uh, this was closed when I ran through the, the chemicals, so I'm just gonna rinse through the entire system. Was probably gonna do that anyway, but uh, let's have this valve open and uh, rinse also through the, the heater core. So everything gets rinsed. There's probably old, dirty, rusty water in there as well. So let's run the core again and see what we get out this time.
so we start it up and the fan is on doesn't probably matter at all but uh, now we should get some uh, total flush of the system So it looks a bit better now, but we will probably get some crud out of here this time as well. Yeah. So I've been running for a few minutes, maybe a bit less than 10 minutes. So uh, let's see if we can uh, drain this uh, after uh, it has cooled off a bit. So I'm gonna pull the low radiator hose again and my drain pan is under. Let's see what we catch. So I got the hose off and uh, drain it. It's steaming a bit here. This time I was a bit smarter. I pulled the hose uh, loose uh, almost all the way. Then I used this uh, screwdriver handle and pushed on the hose. Uh, unfortunately that made the uh, hose not come off uh, all the way which sprayed uh, uh, sprayed uh, uh, the water everywhere but uh, should be some uh, some water in the drain pan at least or most of it and it's pretty brown this time as well this flush procedure should probably be done a bunch of time to get everything out but I'm not sure how patient I am and if I will settle for these two flushes. Um, let's have a look inside here. I think it looks a bit better than before, but uh, it will never be completely rust free, of course and my camera lens is fogging up and um, so i will uh, give it some time and uh, decide if i'm going to do a third flush or not so i have the lower radiator hose back on again and i also filled up this with water one more time uh, looks like we're doing a third flush so um yeah, let's uh, let's do this and see how brown it gets the third time. I think it's starting to look better at least, but uh, yeah, there will likely be quite a bit of brown water coming out this time as well. But it um, feels like it has improved enough that uh, I'm willing to claim that the third flush will be the last one. I will not do more flushes. So after this we can go back to installing the the, uh, the cap again and, and uh, also filling up this with the uh, antifreeze.
so let's see how it looks after a third flush. Third drainage and the water looks really brown this time as well but somehow I, I feel like it's uh, clearing up a bit and I'm confident that uh, this is good enough to uh, not have any blockages or anything in the cooler. So, I will settle with this. So, it feels like the water is really at least not thick or anything like that. Uh, so, uh, I think that uh, no matter how many times we flush, uh, the water will always be a bit brownish. Maybe we can get it less brown than this, but... Yeah, probably doesn't really matter. So I will put the low radiator hose on again and uh, start uh, with the thermostat and the new gasket and then uh, add uh, antifreeze. Okay, so we reconnected the lower uh, radiator hose again and put the, put the hose clamp back. Um, Remove the bolts to the thermostat housing and uh, we will replace this gasket before. But let's check here. So we have a gasket, Male original thermostat housing gasket made in the USA. So let's pull it out and check if it looks like it will fit before we destroy yeah so it looks like it will fit perfectly so um, I have my scraper tool here I will uh, try to remove this old gasket here and I'll get back to the video after I've done that Okay, I've uh, gotten rid of the old gasket, cleaned it off as best as I could. Maybe I should do a bit more up here. And this area surface I previously scrubbed with some scotch bright should be pretty good. Um, so, okay, let's just show me the old gasket here was really crusty, so it came off in pieces. But uh, the scraper tool from Biltema, it uh, ate the gasket pretty well. So it went in between the blade and the uh, holder and it came out here in the other end. So this worked really well. Sheep tool. That saved me a lot of time. So I will uh, do some uh, final cleanup and then we put the new gasket in. I'm not sure if this should go in dry or if uh, some preparations should be made um, but uh, since this is only only the coolant I, I'm not too worried about it honestly so um, this uh, I will put it in as is I will just try to make the surfaces as clean as possible here and as you can see there are indentations uh, along the bolt holes not sure what those are good for, but I will uh, do my best to clean those out as well. Maybe it's, maybe it's just so that the gasket will uh, seat here in the upper housing. Um, and uh, if you need to open and uh, reuse it or something, I don't know. So, we'll get back to you when I'm done cleaning up the surfaces. Okay, so this is going to be the final result for the cleaning of uh, the thermostat housing. Um, the triangular indentation has been scraped out a bit with a screwdriver. The surface has been uh, scraped a bit with the, with the razor blade. Um, yeah, I think it looks good enough now for this. 
If you have any preferred ways of how to install the gaskets, if you put some grease on them or yeah, uh, even RTV or whatever you use, uh, feel free to comment. I really like the comments and feedback from people, how they do it and uh, so on. Uh, always uh, nice to be able to learn from others. And uh, yeah, so uh, before we put this gasket on, we are going to install the thermostat because the thermostat um, should ride on this ridge here which the gasket will cover later. So this is the new ter thermostat here. Uh, let's show the packaging first. So made in the USA, something something, stand economy, 13006, 160 degrees Fahrenheit, 71 degrees Celsius. So this is a uh, supposed to be the coolest uh, thermostat there so uh, as i understand it it will open uh, a bit sooner than most others so uh, a reg regular summer thermostat is uh, i think 82 degrees celsius so it's uh, 11 more degrees than this so this will open quite a bit sooner and then you can have a winter thermostat that opens even later, I think uh, somewhere around 90 degrees. But I'm not going to run this car in the winter and I'm uh, not even sure if I need a thermostat at all. So I wanted one that opens as soon as possible. So this is what I'm going to use. And uh, the old thermostat, maybe I showed it before, 54 millimeters, it says made in the USA. And it's stamped here on the bottom 180. So this is uh, 82 degrees Celsius or 180 degrees Fahrenheit thermostat. Not sure what the 0 to 49 means or the 2S SDC. There's no other stampings on this one. I don't think that one is bad, so I will keep it as a spare. And the new one. It also says 54 millimeters USA um, at the bottom here. It's stamped 160 and 92.59. Yeah, and we have some uh, markings on the side here: patented and two rad, and there's an arrow pointing up. So it should be installed like this in the housing. Not like this, but that's uh, maybe a bit too obvious. So I think the thermostat is seating nicely in the ridge here. No problem. I also squeeze the spring a bit. Maybe if you're really careful, you should boil this and make sure that it opens. Not sure how good the manufacturer quality check is. But I push the spring and uh, it seems to move at least, so uh, I will install this as is. Put in the gasket on and finally the thermostat housing. And we'll try to line everything up with the, the bolts here. And uh, I'll use some uh, Biltema thread locker um, just to avoid the bolts rusting to the the this manifold um, would probably be better with just some thread sealant or something like that which we don't really need to lock these bolts they are long thread and they go all the way through here there is an opening at the bottom so but uh, yeah Thread lock is what I have right now, so that's what I'm going to use. Be right back. So, the bolts have been thread locked and I put them back in. I'm not sure how tight this should be, but I will pull them snug. And then uh, there is plenty of thread and... Uh, gasket here so i don't think they will need to be really hard 
it was not that hard to get them loose. So let's not over tighten them. The thermostat is back on with the new gasket and let's check to make sure we put the right thermostat in. So yes, this is 180, the old one. I'll put this here in the box. Probably should cross over this so I don't fool myself from reading on the box in the future. But uh, anyway, back to filling up the uh, radiator with the antifreeze. And uh, so at this point we know that uh, uh, for all the flushes we've added added a point uh, added approximately six liters uh, and that uh, Google tells me that's 1.6 uh, gallons or uh, about 6.5 uh, quarts but I don't I don't know maybe quarts uh, differ between where you live so Translate it yourself on Google. Six liters is what I estimate that we will need to add here now. So I will have my three liters uh, jug here. I will mix it with antifreeze and water and then we will start pouring. So here is my new long life antifreeze that I bought and the description says that if I mix 50-50, I will get minus 40 degrees Celsius, which is, uh, I'm not going to see that cold here. So um, this, this car will probably never see freezing degrees. So uh, I'm going to probably mix it uh, around 70% uh, water and 30% antifreeze. Maybe a bit more, maybe we will end up at 40, because uh, apart from uh, from uh, from protecting against freezing degrees, this also uh, raises the boiling point for the water. So uh, I will add at least 30% antifreeze, is what I'm going to aim for. And I will reuse my old uh, antifreeze jug here. This is uh, 3 liters, so... We will need two of these. I will take from the big jug and uh, mix it in the small one and then uh, fill the radiator. I also bought this uh, water pump lubrication that we will look into later. So of course I managed to overfill and spill some. Uh, not a lot but a few drops here. And this is not good because uh, animals like the sweet taste and they can get very sick. So try not to spill this or at least flush it off with water wherever, wherever you spill. So try to rinse it off. I will shake the jug a bit here to mix everything and then we'll go fill the radiator up with the first fill here. And uh, of course, same thing here, try not to spill too much on the ground. Um, let's see if I can open it up one handed. And uh, while pouring here, it's a good idea to uh, think did you actually put the lower radiator hose back on because otherwise this is all gonna come right out and uh, I'm checking mine is actually on okay we have some fluid in there let's mix another jug so, second time here, uh, filling this and uh, uh, most, uh, this uh, fit, but maybe we need to add some more once we've started up the engine, it will drop a bit and uh, yeah, I will pause for this filling and do it two-handed. So, managed to uh, put the second jug in. The radiator is almost full here, 
or I think it's at the level it should be because the uh, the water will expand a bit when it gets warm so so shouldn't put uh, all the way to the top but let's start up and see how it looks when uh, the engine is running Okay, so it's running and uh, nothing is flowing, so obviously the thermostat hasn't opened yet. Okay, let's see what happens when the engine gets hot here. I will uh, go mix some more uh, and bring along in case it uh, needs to be filled up later. Okay. So it's been running here for a bit and uh, looks like it has started pumping uh, fluid through here. The level is uh, a bit hard to see but uh, it's quite up there. So maybe we should add some here but not a lot. So. I'll take some from the last mixing and add it. Okay, so I've added uh, about another liter, which is uh, almost uh, a bit more than a quart, which means the radiator is quite full now. So we filled in a total of s seven liters, and uh, yeah. The water is circulating at least, but uh, but uh, it is probably not really hot uh, yet. So uh, maybe we will overflow a bit uh, later when we run this engine a bit hotter. But right now, this is good for now. I also have my jug of extra if we ever need to top up. So uh, we're good to go. Now with the cooler thermostat and uh, yeah hopefully this this will uh, avoid overheating and uh, yeah feels nice to have given the car some love at least that's it for today bye bye